You're listening to The Breakfast Show with Ben and Liam. They're on your radio, and that's why you can't see them. So stay for a while, they're gonna make you smile. And whatever you do, don't touch that dial. You're feeling fine waking up with the sunshine with Ben and Liam. G'day there, podcaster. Hey, this is the recap all around Australia pod. It's the 22nd of May. That's today's date. Uh, Unless you're listening to it on a different day. Well, true, but I mean, it's, yeah. Oh, look, I'd prefer, I, I prefer if you listen to it in its most pure form. Yeah. When you get the date right. Yeah. Okay. But also, you know, it's it's fun to play a little game where you listen six years ahead and yep. be like, ooh, I feel like I'm in 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, enjoy. 13, 24, 10. Give us a buzz. First day ups. Oh, so you want people to call up thirteen twenty four ten for first day ups? Yes. Okay. So yeah, you've had a bit of a blunder. Uh, you know, just started a new job. Um, yeah. Look, obviously, there's there's nerves, isn't there, on the on the first day? Yeah. Sam and I, and my wife, uh, had a good one over the weekend uh, at a dinner. Yeah. <laughs> we ordered a couple of drinks. I uh, got a couple of wines, uh, and the, the, the worker, it was her first day, and she came over to pour the wine, and she was just kind of holding it there for like four or five seconds, and then Sam went, oh, I think the lid's on. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody slow pour. It must, have got a, it must have got a thick, sludgy <laughs> the wine. on this wine. Goodness gracious. Is this what, is something wrong with this wine? I felt so bad for it because I was like, that's so embarrassing for you. It's so embarrassing. And I work, I work on the radio, so I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> uh, you didn't have to point at her and laugh today, in front of the whole room. Going, Guess what, everyone? She's just bought us a wine with a lid on. 13, 24, 10. If you like her and you've had a bit of a first day blunder, give us a buzz. Uh, Chelsea, first day blunders, what happened? Uh, hey guys, so I'm a nurse and on my first day I kicked over a urine bottle and then slipped in it. So, oh, yeah. that's a bit of fun. Did anyone see it happen? Yep, my, all my co-workers. Awesome, <laughs> nice. Welcome to the new girl. That would have spread through the hospital like wildfire. Uh, Paula joins us now. First day blunder, what happened? Well, I started my new job and at the end of the day I uh, went to turn my computer off, which there was a big sign that said do not turn computer off. And the next morning when everyone came in, the server was down because I'd turned my computer off. <laughs> the one rule! The one rule! That's why we laminated the sign. Uh, Maddie, what happened to you on your first day? Um, I finished my first day at work and I ended up um, reversing out and I scraped the side of the car. I put a note like a good person um, and then three hours later I get a phone call and it was my boss's mum's car. Oh, <laughs> not even the boss, the boss's mum. <laughs> yeah, it was so awkward. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. Were they, were they okay about it though in the long run? Well, th- my bosses were overseas so they'd never even met me before they just hired me through like the manager. Oh, so they were like, Oh my god! And they thought it was the funniest thing. Thank goodness. Oh, okay, oh, good. good. Yeah, I mean, that, lucky. You'd be hard pressed to have a worse first day. That's for sure. I reckon that's the biggest f up we've had so far. Yeah. Last one from Robin. Okay, so I actually nearly killed a patient on my first day as a very junior doctor. Oh. So my job was to check all the results of the people after the surgery, and I noticed that this man had had a little bit less potassium than he should have had. And I thought, oh, I don't need to bother the senior doctor. I know what to do. I'll give him a couple of potassium tablets. And then it wasn't until the end of the day that the senior doctor said, oh, my God, started running, and the patient went to intensive care unit because he needed a lot more than two potassium tablets. Oh. But luckily he survived. Right. So he was so lo- he hadn't eaten a banana in so long that he could have died from, <laughs> from not having enough yeah. potassium in the body. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Robin. Haven't made that mistake again. Well, look, at least they were okay because I want to finish this on a text message that we got uh, from Emily who said, I'm a dog groomer and on my first day I accidentally clipped a dog's chin with the clippers. It was a really old dog and on blood thinners it didn't stop bleeding for days. <laughs> it's so horrible. <laughs> What, you would I give, know, you put dogs on blood thinners. You would give that job up straight away, wouldn't you go? This is not the industry for me. Give us a buzz right now. 13, 24, 10. Do you know a space invader? Not talking about the game, obviously. I'm talking about someone who has no boundaries. You know those people 
They just they don't have that that thing inside them that goes, I'm too close to that person. Ben, you're an introvert. I'm a people person. I love being around people, but I also love my own personal space. Oh, yeah. There is a certain point that is too close. Yep. We used to work with a guy who'd walk into the office and give us little massages on the back when yeah. we wanted to talk. How weird was that? Inappropriate. Inappropriate for the yeah. workplace, for sure. Yeah. Uh, the reason I bring up Space Invaders is because i got a great example for you. I had a friend who was on an interstate flight home yesterday, and he told me that while he was eating his in-flight meal, he had his tray table down, of course. Yeah. And you know when they give you like a little water in a little cup? He'd finished his water, and he was using that as a bin. The person next to him, Whoa. who was also eating their in-flight meal, Hang on. used his little bin as their own personal receptacle. Are you kidding that me? That's disgraceful. Get your rubbish out of my personal space. If there was an air marshal on that flight, I would expect him to restrain of course. that person. That zip, is disgusting. Zip tie them and bring them to the back of the plane. You, you are do... not entitled to use that person's personal hey, space look, bin. Sometimes you argue over elbow room, but that's just, you know, oh, they're, they're small seats. I could get you imagine it. Eating... But if you if you reach over and touch oh. someone else's tray, While they're you eating should lose well. that hand. That's oh, insane. Could you imagine? That is People crazy. have been killed for less. I think so. In some nations. Yeah. My God. Absolute space invaders. Do you know what I hate? Space invaders, like when you're, you know, when, um, this is a bit of a standard thing, but if you're like walking your dog and then someone like pats your dog without talking to you. Yeah. You're like, okay, well, I'm here too. Maybe yeah. you ask me first or yeah. just talk to me. All right. They are a few examples of space invaders. If you have got one, 13, 24, 10, give us a buzz. Lucas joins us now. Uh, do you know a space invader? I'm a plumber, and there's multiple jobs that I go on where, like, people will just sit behind me oh, and just watch no. while I work and just keep watching until I'm done. Yeah, and you, like, you'd be thinking, mate, if you want to do this job, I'll give you the spanner. Yeah, if you care so much about it, you, you do it yourself. Yeah. Especially because most of the time, yeah, exactly. wouldn't you be, like, fully, like, under a sink or something, and you're sort of yeah. you're bent all over, and they're right behind you, icy crouch down. Like, it's a weird position to be in, right? Yeah, and then there's someone, sometimes where they're like, There'll be a tool on the floor and you go to grab it and then they'll grab it for you. Oh, <laughs> no, get out. I hate that. Oh, it's not worth your time. Sorry you got to deal with that, Lucas. Uh, Julie, you also know a space invader? Yeah, I was on an international flight and I was uh, in between a couple. One had the window seat, one had the aisle seat mm. and I offered to change but they said, no, we like... You know, she likes the window, he likes the aisle, and they constantly <laughs> would pass food, the bread roll would come across. Oh, and me, I hate that. Oh, That's so, so selfish. That's so selfish on their behalf. They're like kissing in front of you. Oh. How, how long was the flight, Julie? It was, it was uh, Sydney, Hong Kong. Oh, good. Ooh. Just a short one then. Oh, at least you didn't have to sit in between them for too long. Then pretty crazy. Um... Yeah, like, almost hard to believe. I got a call from a celebrity last night. Wow. Um, annoyingly, I, I missed the call. Uh, I'm still kicking myself about that one, so I will, I will call them back a little later on today. Mm. Uh, but it was nice of them to leave a voicemail. Hello, it's John Howard calling from Sydney for the Liberal Party. <laughs> Former PM John Howard called me personally. Pretty cool. I'm pretty sure that that was just a pre-recorded message. No, I, that was that was definitely John Howard. It sounded like his voice. Well, yeah, I'm not saying it's not John Howard, but he would record just it, one message. No, it seemed it seemed like he was just calling to check in. So it was weird. He was he was really um I don't know why, but he was really trying to get me to vote for Scomo. It's I think they're mates or something like that. So um yeah, he was he was putting on a hard sell. I ask you to vote liberal to deliver a strong economy and a stronger future for our wonderful country. Yes, yeah, so what they would do is they would just they would get him to pre-record a message and then they'd get like a machine to just call everybody uh, in Australia, essentially. Uh, did you get a call? I don't think so. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and the thing is, he, he spoiled a nice catch-up by doing, doing what John always does, and he, he just got a bit gossipy. Mr Albanese simply has not presented a credible alternative and be disastrous for our country. Thank you so much for your time. 
And they need to be a little bitch, John. <laughs> Just wanted to have a nice conversation, okay? You don't need to bring the mood down. <laughs> was that a house party over the weekend, Ben? One of my mates, Kenny, he's married to a, a lovely lady called Lara. And I, I, like, I know Lara less, and I, I really don't know her family that well. Mm. But it was like a, a bit of a thing. There was like bands playing. Because it was at their place, her parents also rocked up. And someone told me her parents' names. And I said, shut up, you're lying to me. Mm. There's no way in hell. And they said, no, 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 this is really a thing. So I, I asked Lara if we could potentially get her mum's number so we could speak to her on the show. Yeah. So I could prove this is this is real. But her parents' names yeah. are Ron and Hermione. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that? And Hermione, uh, not Hermione Granger, but Hermione Watts joins us on the line now. Um, I'm sure this isn't that amusing to you at this point, is it? Not really. I'm I'm much more used to it now than what it was at the beginning. The funny thing is, though, you were obviously with Ron and your name was Hermione before J.K. Rowling even put pen to paper. I mean, you, you've had this name your whole life. Yeah. Someone came up and said, do you, do you know that your name's in the Harry Potter books? And I had no idea what they meant. And, um, yeah, I started reading it and there's my name. And I was like... Oh, my God. Did you walk up to him and say, orange hair, a hand-me-down rub, you must be a Weasley? <laughs> <laughs> my name was a total curse. Yeah, yeah. A cruciatus curse. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Hermione, uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Give Ron uh, our regards uh, and appreciate yes. you having a chat. Thank you very much. No worries. Have a great day. You Bye. You too. Bye. <laughs> See ya. How good is that? Ron and Hermione as parents. Why do we do this this morning? 13, 24, 10. Famous names. Because it happens sometimes, uh, you know, maybe if you, you know, you've had a name all your life and then someone all of a sudden gets famous, you know, if, you're, if your name's like Machine Gun Kelly or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 13, 24, 10 is the number. Uh, Lee, is it your name? Do you have a famous name? Yeah. Um, my parents, my friend's parents' names were Mary and Joseph. Right. And we, was your friend's name Jesus? <laughs> um, were you? Oh, that was a joke. Yeah, yeah. Like he didn't. He didn't like it. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah. He didn't like when you'd bring frankincense and myrrh for his birthday. <laughs> At least bring me something gold. Zara, good morning. Is it yours or someone you know? Good morning, guys. It's not my name, but it is someone I met, and I'm not sure if it counts as a famous name. But her first name was Holly, and her last name was Wood. So her name together was Hollywood. For real? Hollywood. Why would you yeah. do that to your child? Yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> That is good. I like that, Zara. Yeah, and you know what? Also, your name is famous for the brand Zara. Yes. So. Yeah, it's spelled a little bit differently. I've got a H in the middle, but oh, it damn. is certainly famous. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. unfortunately, we can't put you in the drawer for that money then. <laughs> no, you're in the drawer. Uh, Robbie, this was a guy that you worked with. He had a famous name. Yeah, that's right. His name's Michael Hutchins. Oh, <laughs> in excess. How good is that? And uh, that's, that's the actual name of his business, in excess concrete. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. <laughs> he comes around and does a couple of numbers, a couple of covers as he pours your concrete. Thanks for that, Robbie. Live, baby, live. We have got someone now who's got the famous name. David, what's your full name? David Jones. <laughs> <laughs> We've had you on the show before. Because <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. we made the yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah, and I felt bad. Yeah. Well, it's, it's nice to know that you're still uh, listening uh, because, yeah, I thought you, you know, you would have finished after that last time. Also, Davy Jones Locker. Yes. So doubly famous. Hey, David, even when you called up, you sounded a bit flat. Yeah. Just going to get my key. Ben, have you got yours? Uh, where did I put mine? Yep, I got it. Right, Ready? Let's turn it. And open up the forbidden folder. This is where all the naughty ideas go, where all the, you know, the boss says, no, you can't do that. Yeah, That's the ones just... that typically you go, you can't do that. Yeah. I like this one. This one's interesting. What's a secret within your industry that they don't want the public to know? Because when you work in a certain industry, mm. you learn certain things. Do you know what this came from? I've got a mate. Yeah. This will rock your world. He works in a call centre, right? And apparently they have a button. Yeah where they can hear you waiting on hold. No, they don't. So, you know when you get put on hold for like 20, 30 minutes sometimes, you're calling a call centre and you're yeah. like, oh, jeez, these effing... Yeah. You know, you're just going nuts. Yeah. And you're going, I can't believe it. They can hear that. Unless, you're, unless your phone's on mute, they can hear. That's wild. That Honestly, when I found that out, I was like, oh, my God, I've said some heinous things. 
I can things. I can blow the whistle on uh, some radio intel. Well, that's I mean our, our mm-hmm. industry is radio. Yeah, yep. what, why why not? A lot of the time when you hear an interview, pre-recorded. Mm. We've already done that ages ago. These are the industry secrets that they don't want you to know. Mm-hmm. But we'll you tell go. you. Yeah, we just blow a whistle there. What's a secret within your industry that they don't want the public to know? You can remain anonymous. 13, 24, 10. We've been open and honest. We'd like you to do the same. Grace, what industry do you work in? Hey, guys. I work at a very famous fast food joint. And when you guys return your chips, we actually resell them. <gasps> You put them back in the. You put them back in the Bay Marie. I personally don't, but I've seen a lot of workers do. So the chips you're selling are they? Um, well, no. Let's not get into specifics. Yeah. <laughs> but so, I just. Um, I I think I think that we've heard enough in terms of. Uh, I know what's going on there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think that every single fast food chain sponsors this show. Yeah, yeah. so we can't really we find it. We'll we can easily say, are they skinny chips? Are they fat chips? Yeah. Which area of Europe are they from? Yeah. Or are they like, yeah. you know, are they uh, good old American? But I just, um, I think that we're treading in dangerous territory. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure, Grace. yeah. Well, <laughs> let's just leave it there. Yeah. Leave it there. <laughs> All right, can we do one more? Let's go. Come All on, right. let's do one more. Peter, what's your industry secret, mate? G'day, mate. Um, I used to work for a company that used to buy and sell secondhand goods. Mm. Um, essentially, if you had an item stolen from you, you would essentially file a police report to get that item back. Yep. We would usually cooperate with the police very well, and they would come in and redeem the item for you. Mm-hmm. However, if the item was of significant value, you could um, essentially sell it in that period of time after the police report was made. And then it's legally that next, that it's that next person's property because they now have a receipt <gasps> saying they purchased the so item. So you're saying you, if you were quick enough to just sell it, even though you knew it was stolen, that's that's binding, and that person now owns it. That's correct, and they have no way to get it back. Whoa! <laughs> Industry secret. And that was happening pretty often. Uh, it's not often, but typically it would happen with very high end items. Yeah, so right. TV, rings, and things. Plus yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> a bit more commission on the side for you for well, turning a blind eye. Peter, thank you very much for blowing that whistle. Well, are you a fan of Jason Momoa, Liam? I mean, everyone loves Momoa. I didn't, yeah. I didn't get around Aquaman, but I liked him as Carl Drago and just him being him. He is in trouble, though, uh, as a bit of a tourist because he was taking photos inside the Sistine Chapel. He uploaded those photos and then got destroyed in the comments because everyone said, you can't do that. You're not allowed to take photographs. Because of the flash on yeah, the Because of the flash. Yeah. Apparently the flash is bad for the old paintings. Yeah, right. Well, you know what? Like, he probably didn't know. Like, different different well, countries, different cultures, different rules. Sometimes. That's what he said. He said he yeah. didn't know, and he apologised. But then the thing that confused me was I saw the photos, and a couple of them, he's getting photos with the security guards. But that's it. They want to get photos of him too. Like, he's not doing the wrong thing. They should. Surely they're the ones that would have enforced, hey, mate, you can't take photos yeah, in here true. unless it's with me. Confused tourists. What did you see? Maybe yeah. you were the confused tourist because, you know, as we said, different countries, different mm-hmm. cultures. Mm-hmm. Different rules. You don't know what's going on. Confused tourists. What did you see? 13, 24, 10. If you get in touch, you will be in the draw to win $10,000. You could be winning that today. Nova's 10K a day in May. Donna joins us now. You were the confused tourist yourself. Yes, I was. I was a young, naive 18-year-old going to London, mm. and I stopped at Abu Dhabi Airport. I was travelling by myself, yeah. and, you know, as a, as a young girl, you know, you, you take lots of photos, and there was this beautiful like, upside-down mushroom in, like, these beautiful rainbow colours going up to the ceiling. Right. And so I, you know, I thought, take a photo, and then all of a sudden there was these guys come up to his machine gun and said, what are you doing? What are you doing? Take a photo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With machine gun. Yeah, but what, what did you do? What was wrong? I was just taking a photo of this beautiful sculpture in the airport. And you're not allowed to take photos? No. Oh. <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but maybe it was just a security thing in Abu Dhabi. Like, this was 30 yeah, years ago. Yeah, I so. guess. I mean, 30 years ago seems strange. I know in airports they can be yeah, quite they touchy. Yeah, those, yeah, people from Singapore airport stealing their mushroom <laughs> sculpture ideas. Yeah. Oh, well, glad glad you're okay, Donna. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think they would have executed you on the spot. <laughs> I think you would have been okay. Yeah, I think you, that's true. Uh, Will, you were also a confused tourist? Yes, yes. I was wandering around Paris um, and got to the Arc de Triomphe, and I didn't realise there was a pedestrian underpass, and I crossed across five lanes of 
traffic around the most dangerous roundabout in Europe. Oh, so uh, you, just, you just walk, walk straight through? It. Yes, and stopping traffic um, as it's trying to get around and beeping horns and all the local Parisians yeah, thinking I mean, what a stupid tourist. The Octet de Triomphe, is it five lanes around the roundabout? Yes. Yeah. Yep, and I got there, ran into a friend, and I said, oh, wow, that was bad, and they said, you didn't just take the underpass? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lily, confused tourist, you were one? Yeah, um, I was 19 in Europe on Kentucky and I uh, went for my first massage ever in Spain and the lady handed me like these three ointment things in like little um, like glass shooters. Well, that's yeah. what I thought they were. Yeah. So I proceeded to shot them. Oh. Um, and then as she turned back around, she then explained to me um, in poor English that I was meant to choose which one I wanted her to use. Oh, as, a, as an oil? You need three shots of oil. Yeah, well, they were like oily but watery as well. So <laughs> I, drank, I was a bit like, oh, this isn't right. You know, another country, they drink different things. Yeah. Did it mess um, up your yeah. guts? Uh, yeah, it didn't do too great. Yeah, you're farting bubbles for the rest of the, <laughs> the trip. I love that. That's such a Kentucky thing to do. Like, every liquid around you, you just shot. <laughs> Smash the glass over your head. Oh, yeah. Lily, thank you very much. 13, 24, 10. Give us a buzz. They stole what? Because last night I was robbed, Liam. I was robbed of my Uber Eats. <laughs> okay. I, I thought, was genuinely robbed. No, I thought someone would have taken your TV or something. No, worse. I was hungry. I was very hungry, and so was my wife, Sam, and she was genuinely upset. How long did you leave the bag outside? Okay, I'll tell you the story. All right. So we've ordered Uber Eats, both very hungry. We got Hungry Jacks. We're sitting there, we're watching a TV show. I think we're watching Restoration Australia. I'm waiting for the order. She goes, it's there. I said, great. So I got up to go get it straight away and went out there, opened the door, no Uber Eats. Interesting. Very interesting. And I went back in and I said, no, it's not there yet. And she said, no, it's there. They sent a, sent a photo. You know, they do that thing sometimes. They, send, they, they actually you know, send sometimes, a photo. They don't always do it. Sometimes they take a photo of the order and say it's at the front door. Mm. So this time they had done that. And I looked at it and I went, well, yeah, it's there, but it's at the neighbor's house. Yeah, right. So, so I went over to the neighbor's house. Yeah. It was gone. <laughs> <laughs> it was gone. So they've gone. And then, and then I thought, oh, they must have taken it inside. Yeah. Then they probably text me to say, oh, hey, sorry, you came to our house. Yeah, of course. So I went inside, grabbed my phone, no text. <laughs> just, just the sound of light nibbles on, then, a, on, a, on, a, then, on a pork burger. And then I thought, oh, maybe they've taken it inside, like someone thought that the other person yeah, had ordered you're it. You're really giving them the benefit of the I doubt. I was. The worst part was I could smell it in the air. Like I could <laughs> smell yeah. it had been delivered. There's been Hungry Jacks here recently, <laughs> and, and I know as someone who's eaten a fair yeah. bit of that stuff, it lingers. Yeah. It does linger. So, I had my Uber Eats stolen. That's why 13, oh, 24, the, 10. The neighbour, you reckon the neighbour's just eating it? hundred <laughs> percent. There's no other explanation. What the heck? There's no other explanation. Well, what are their names? I'm not going to say Call them out. I'm not going to call them out. I'm not going to call them out. Is it the ones to the left or the right? I'm not going to say. 13, oh, it's the ones to the left. They, <laughs> I've seen their house and I think they earn enough to be buying their own Hungry Jacks is all I'll say. 13, 24, 10. Give us a buzz. They stole what? Wesley, you were robbed. Hey, Ben and Liam. Yeah, so uh, we had some breakfast lamb chops and some bacon defrosting overnight, and we were burgled, <laughs> and, yep, that was stolen the next morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> lamb chops. So someone broke into your house. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and as well as, I'm assuming, stealing some valuables, they also <laughs> took the meat that they was defrosting. Correct, yeah, 100% correct. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy, Wesley. Yep. Uh, Alicia joins us now. Yours was also food-related. What did they steal? Yeah, hey, Ben and Liam. So my family and I got broken into a few years ago just before Christmas, mm. and they basically stole everything, but at the end of the night, we decided to get some takeaway and sit down. And then we went to go get our chocolate from our pantry and they decided to steal our chocolate milk and chockies. <laughs> well, after, after a big night of robin, it, it, always, it is always good to quench that thirst with an oak milk, I find. Uh, Karen, what do they steal? Hi, Ben. Hi, Liam. How are you going? Good, thanks, Karen. Karen. Oh, look, we, we landscaped our front garden, put some beautiful frangipani trees in there yeah. and... We decided to go to Bunnings and get a few more plants to make it really nice and colourful. We came back and they were gone. They stole your trees, Karen. Stole, stole our trees not long after we put them in. Yeah, well, we yeah, could right. see was these three holes in the front garden. We thought, 
Hang on a minute. Yeah. Half got, crunch pennies were in there. Yeah. We were only gone for about half an hour. You got any theories who took them? No, I got no idea. Yeah. Hey, if you need any leads, I know Ben's neighbours are pretty dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> they're, the real t- they're the type to lead a rebel whopper if it shows up on their doorstep if they haven't paid for it. I mean, it's pretty insane, isn't it? Chris Hemsworth, Thor, uh, Kirk in Star Trek, what well, in one of them. Is he? Uh, Huntsman in Snow White and the Huntsman. Yep. Um, uh, he's in Extraction. Yeah, uh, Yes, on Netflix. Agent H. In the new Men in Black film, he's in Broken Hill, which is a small country town, and you may have seen some of this online. But people are absolutely losing their minds. And the next person we're speaking to actually served Chris uh, at a cafe just yesterday. Renee from the Silly Goat Cafe joins us now. How are you? Good. How are you? So damn good. I mean, not as good as you. I mean, you met Chris Hemsworth. He's like a god in these parts. <laughs> Yeah, very nice man. Are you <laughs> able to talk us through what happened? Oh, well, he walked in and everyone kind of said, G'day. Um, I was kind of pouring latte art. So I was like, hey, guys. And then I heard his voice and I was like, oh, my God. So I did a little bit of a wonky latte art. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, he sat down with his wife and they were very nice. A couple of the staff members asked for photos and a lot of the customers um, got photos with him. He didn't say no. And did you, did you manage to have a chat at all, or was it just all sort of pleasantries? You were just sort of pretty brief? Um, I was. I didn't really have a chat. A few of the other staff members did. We were a bit busy on the coffee section. So th- The film crews bring a lot of people into town. So Yeah, you mentioned the film crews there. So we know they're filming the new Mad Max, I believe. Does that mean that yeah. you're seeing the movie being filmed in Broken Hill at the moment? Uh, yeah, there's um, a few um, places in town, but mainly out on the outskirts, near Silverton and stuff like that. So um, did, yeah. did Chris walk in or did he come in in like a post-apocalyptic tank with like skulls <laughs> on the front of it? Like, how did he, how did yeah, he roll no, up? he used his hammer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, look, Renee, you've been a pleasure to talk to. Um, thank you so much for filling us in about his trip to the Silly Goat Cafe. Yeah, thank you very much. Imagine being so famous that you go to a cafe and then people on the radio speak to people who work in that cafe <laughs> about you being in that cafe. That's literally what, what just happened. Well, 13, 24, 10, did you serve a celeb? If you get in touch, you'll be in the draw to win $10,000 today. Uh, Elizabeth, did you serve a celeb? I did. Uh, once upon a time, I served Draco Malfoy. I think Tom what? Felton. Yeah. That's so good. I mean, we know he yeah. was here for a little while. What, what, where did he come into? What were you doing? Uh, well, McDonald's. So we used to get a lot of celebrities. No so we way. had Steve-O from Jackass. <gasps> we had Shane Warne a bunch of times. Uh, yeah. I would have but, led um, with I would have led with Shane Warne and Steve I reckon over Draco. I must have been... I just served them personally though. So. Oh, okay. Do you remember his Macca's order? No, no. He was with a couple of other people, and I think he didn't want to be recognised. He was in for like a Comic Con thing. Yeah, right. Um, so a bunch of my staff members were like, "Can I go and say hi?" And yeah. I was like, "What's well, the It'd be cool. Imagine having to tell Draco Malfoy that the soft serve machine was out of order. Yeah, you went to my father, he's about this. <laughs> God, I was waiting to do that as yeah. soon as you said. I, set you set, up. Like, literally, I was like, <laughs> set up, we're playing volleyball, baby. Whoop, and spike. Uh, last one here. Uh, Gemma, you've served a celeb yourself? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I did, actually. Way back in the day, a long time ago when I was working in London, I worked for a place called the Groucho Club, where uh, a lot of celebrities used to yeah, hang out. I've heard that. Yeah, well, I was sort of there in its heyday, so uh, yes, I, I am old, but <laughs> going back a bit, <laughs> um, there was, oh, look, I think my second night there, I actually worked on the private party for Paul Simon's Graceland opening night in London. Of course, Simon So there was a lot of celebrities in there. Uh, yeah, Paul Simon, that's Simon. Uh-huh. And worked on Madonna's birthday party. Oh. Um, David Bowie worked on Eric Clapton's oh, birthday party. Oh, gee whiz. Uh, They're getting better. Uh, that was kind of funny because Ringo Starr and his wife, Barbara Bach, were also there and they were on the, the teetotal table. We weren't allowed to serve them alcohol, but in the end, all the guests were kind of getting up and kind of sneaking it across to them, which was kind of funny. Yeah, right. And, uh, okay. Yeah, just oh, Michael Douglas, Charles Downs, Charlton Heston, and oh, just lots of celebrities, you know, well, they Gemma, were all hanging out there. You take the cake. I don't think we're going to beat that. <laughs> um, and for coming on air, you're in the draw for 10K a day in May. Thank you very much. Oh, wow, thank you so much. No really worries at all. It. There are only a few things in this world that are guaranteed. Death, taxes, Nova turning up the feel goods, mm-hmm. and women taking longer than men to get ready when you're going out. Now, I'm sure there's some ladies listening right now 
who are the exception to the rule. I get that. But I'm just saying, in my experience, this is the case. Belle, I've got you in the studio. Hello. Because I need you to be the voice that represents all of the ladies, okay? okay? Small job. Yeah, all right. Why does it take so long to get ready? The thing that pushed me over the edge was on Saturday night, Sam and I went out for a nice dinner. Yeah. Um, but the footy was on. So this was before we went out for dinner. So I said, this is great. I'm going to watch the footy. Sam said, perfect. That gives me tons of time to get ready. So she literally had the entire football game. That's what we're talking almost two hours. Over two hours. I still was ready before her... <laughs> When we left at 6 p.m., I was still ready before. Did you shower her. like after the footy? Yes. I, I'm not here to brag, but it was, I started getting ready at 6. We left at 6.08. I was ready at 6.08. So it took me eight minutes. Yeah. And what did you put on? What were you wearing? I wore uh, like these pants. They're pretty hard to get on those pants. Let me, yeah. guess, let me guess. You just grabbed a pants, grabbed yes. pants, grabbed a shirt. That's yes. it. Done. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. Where I find I personally take the longest is mm. not the makeup because you do the same kind of thing every time. Yep. You go, cool, da 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 da. You get yep. the same routine, same process. Get the cat eyes on. Uh, yes, and but it's the clothes and the outfit. Yeah. Now you've got to put take into consideration what kind of event we're we going to. Is it a dinner? Is mm-hmm. it? Am I going to see the same people that I saw a week ago? No, but, okay, okay you, I can answer all this. It's a dinner. And no, it's just us. It's just a dinner. You know okay. that. You know that when you're getting ready. Okay, yep. So am I wearing something that it looks really nice, but it's really tight? So therefore, when I'm sitting down at dinner, I'm going to be really uncomfortable. So therefore, you've got to go, <laughs> well, I've got to wear one of my looser dresses, but maybe I don't feel great today in a dress. So maybe I'm going to put some pants on, <laughs> but these ones, they just don't work with the heels. This Are we walking a, a, a long way from the car? Is this what's in your head? Walk? Is this yeah. what's in your head? Yes. I, I, and I, I, I counted I counted five outfit changes for my fiancé once, and then, this is my favourite we got in the Uber and she's like, oh, I forgot something. She came back with a different outfit. <laughs> I was like, how did you even do that? That was so quick. That's the thing. And I, I change, when I go out, mm. like I might change maybe five or six times at least, mm. um, just looking in the mirror going, nah, I'm not feeling it. One day you can feel it, the next day you don't. See, I think sometimes the problem can be when you have too much time that, no, that allows you to do the outfit change. <laughs> I've got a good trick with Sam where what I can do is I say to her, I'm calling the Uber. Yeah, that's good. That 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 way you put an, an actual time on but it. They know, four minutes. minutes. You know that's the thing. They know you can cancel within five minutes. This is yeah. if you really want to level up. I don't know if I've told you this one before. Yeah, but we've got we've got the house alarm. Thirty seconds. You press that. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. It's like Mission Impossible. It's like the house is going to blow up. You got twenty four <laughs> seconds. It's going to go. You got to get out of here. And we're also joined now by producer Bell, aka the What Bell. Oh, love rat. Love rat. Bell's a love rat. Producer Bell is Love Rat. You can email her at any time. Loverat at novafm.com.au is the email. Go on from Anita. Um, it's not really even a question. It's more just like she's telling us about a gripe she has with her husband. Hey, that's fine. Yeah, you can just air a grievance, whatever. She said, I love my husband. We've spent 15 wonderful years together. But there is one thing that still drives me up the wall. Uh, his chewing is atrocious. It's sickening. We can't ever go out together. And we eat dinner at different times now because I just can't deal with it anymore. That seems extreme. Yeah, but I love that you're at that point where you just go, you know what? No more dinner together because I'm so over But you know it. what I mean? You know, you know there's those people oh, that, yeah. that just with their mouth open. And then the, the worst one is when um, people are eating, they've got so much food in their mouth that you can hear the whistle of their nose oh, don't, breathing. Don't, or not. don't, 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 don't. Yes, no, yes. And you know what? Like, I love you both, but sometimes you do that when um, you eat your lunch after the show. You'll both be eating and I can and you says, and I look over and you got your headphones on so you don't know and I'm just like this is where I'm at in life <laughs> I don't believe it <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I think I'm like maybe I'm eating this a bit too quick yeah. but look um, obviously that's that's a little thing that Anita wants to change a better partner I think it's perfectly normal 13 24 10 give us a buzz what would you change about your partner we always say much we love our partners but if you were honest and you looked at your life partner and you said, what's one thing I would yeah. truly change about that person? Let us know. 13, 24, 10. Jade joins us now. What's one thing you'd change about your partner, Jade? Hi, uh, So we're newlyweds. So I really feel like I can't get annoyed at this yet. Mm. But <laughs> you know when you're cuddling on the couch and you're watching a movie, mm. I cannot stand my husband breathing on me. So right. we have okay. <laughs> actually go on like opposite ends of the couch because whenever I feel his breath, I'm like, oh. Is, <laughs> is he a mouth breather? 
He is. Oh, right. Right. So it's, like, kinda, it's almost like that warm dog breath. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe a snorkel would fix things if he's just sort of wearing one of those whilst you're watching a movie. Uh, Kayla, what's one thing you change about your partner? Um, so my partner snores really badly, but he snores on like inhale and exhale. Oh, yes, my, no, Luke, Luke, my partner does that as well. He does it. He does it both, and I don't know how. As in, a... and but no, no, no. It goes, uh, Kayla, does he go like this? Because Luke goes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh. if he's sick, it, if it's sick, it's like the first one. Like, or yeah. if he's if he's been drinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. The drinking. I get an absolute bollocking every time I've been out for a session because she's like, oh, you're going to die last night. Your breathing is so bad. I have, yeah, a lot of sinus issues and the, the beers don't really help with that. Jamie, last one here. A thing you'd change about your partner. Um, all right. So she's a terrible midnight eater. So I'd buy a new loaf of bread and go shopping, get some butter and all that. Mm. Um, over the night, she would wake up and I would momentarily wake up every single time she does this. She'd go to the kitchen. And not only eat the entire loaf of bread, they eat the entire stick of butter what? on top of the bread. What? Like, Are we talking I sleep eating or she's fully awake and doing this? No, she's fully awake. And I've always questioned her. I go, we've got jams. Why didn't you use that? She's like, I like butter. <laughs> and she'll literally eat a 250 grams of butter How on often? top of the How often she she'll do it every bread? night. Every, every night. night. Every night. <laughs> every <laughs> night what? she's eating a no, loaf of bread and a stick of butter. That can't no, be healthy, no, mate. <laughs> No, the last three weeks she's picked up the habit because um, she used to eat margarine, and I go, butter's better for you. It tastes better. So I taught her about it's not it. Better for you. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it ever since. You taught her about I'm butter. About you gotta stop Jamie. buying that in Mate, the house. You, you gotta you, get rid of all you, bread. I reckon and all that, butter. that's like locks on the cabinet type territory. <laughs> that's like three weeks, three loaf, like a loaf every night with yeah. butters. My God. Wow, Jamie, we'll leave it there. And that's the end of the podcast. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set a reminder in my phone right now. Yep. For six years. And you're going to go back and listen to this. this. I'll, I'll, you know how I said that earlier in the yep. episode? And I'm yep. going to go back and listen and pretend I'm in 2022. You have a new phone by then. Nah, that's a good point. Um, Why don't you train a raven Yeah. to return to you in six years? Just go around the world a couple of times and yeah. then come back. and then come back. Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to do that. Good idea. Ben and Liam is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.